Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and the situation is just not good. We are seeing right now, according to the New Yorker, that chaos in Syria, ISIS detainees escapes as the U.S. pulls out there. Uh, ISIS detainees have escaped. Uh, it says here in between the rounds, as its golf, golf club on both Saturday and Sunday, President Trump decided that he was done with Syria. He ordered the evacuation of thousands of U.S. Special Forces troops deployed to contain ISIS, the jihad movement that still has tens of thousands of members waging an underground insurgency across Syria and Iraq. Uh, for five years, the Americans have been the backbone of support. Well, uh, that's debatable. And as we had reported on to you on October the 9th, because today's October the 13th there, uh, I'm going to play the clip for you here that our intel from uh, the Middle East there was already telling us clearly that uh, this whole uh, uh, insurgency of the Turkish military will be to free the ISIS militants because Israel and the United States need those militants to cross over into the Iraqi side in order to overthrow the current uh, uh, Iraqi president. Listen to this right here. This was on October the 9th there. By the way, Tulsi Gabbard in the background was used as a reinforcement of what my intel source was saying. Not an endorsement. However, I do think when it comes to the Democrats, she probably is the best candidate uh, for uh, the job for running for president on the Democratic side. Uh, but, you know, of course, that'll never happen. They're going to have Joe Biden or, or this other girl that's running over there, you know. But anyway, doesn't matter, neither here nor there. Listen in. Over 20 of the SDF fighters stationed there. It is only a question of days before they start their attacks for the purpose of freeing their captured members. And he also goes on to mention here Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi and, and his last message. Now that message, friends, and I'll share that with you once again, uh, that was a recorded message. This came out on, uh, it was actually published here September 16th. We were able to tell you by our intelligence sources there, I don't even know, what, three, four weeks before it even was released, that al-Baghdadi was going to be releasing this statement. Uh, and, of course, he did. He noted on here, he said in his last message, if he knew about then the upcoming Turkish invasion, because why, if you listen to the recorded statement, he spent half the time of the message asking the remnants of ISIS or ISIL units to attack and free the captured fighters and their families. They're not there again, that's more of the intel that we've been getting what's going on there. It is a coordinated effort in order to free the ISIL members. Al-Baghdadi, the source that I have that's been speaking to me about these issues there, seemed to indicate that al-Baghdadi knew that the Turkish uh, onslaught would happen. And of course, Turkey is using uh, mercenary forces for the most part in its fight across the border. Uh, inside of Syria. But now that they have actually entered into the Syrian space there, finally, finally the Kurds are willing to make a compromise and work with the, uh, the excuse me, the Kurds are willing to make a compromise with the Syrian army in order to get President Bashar al-Assad and, as they put it, Putin to back them. That'll be really interesting to see how much Putin is really going to back the Kurds. But nonetheless, we also reported that on the 9th as well, uh, that, uh, or maybe not the ninth, I think it was on the 10th there, we had reported about how that there was already an agreement uh, that was being made between the Syrians and the Kurds and that the Syrians were already moving troops inside of the Kurdish-held area there. Uh, it says here, though, and this just came out today on uh, foreignpolicy.com, if we have to choose between compromise and genocide, we will choose our people. The Kurds commander-in-chief explains why his forces are finally ready to partner with Assad and Putin. Uh, he goes on to say, the world's first uh, heard of us, the Syrian Democratic Forces, amid the chaos of our country, uh, country civil war. I serve as a commander in chief of the SDF, uh, has 70,000 soldiers who have fought against a jihad extreme, extremism, ethnic hatred, and oppression of women since 2015. They have become a very disciplined and professional fighting force. They never fired a single bullet toward Turkey, U.S. soldiers, and officers. Uh, now know us well and always praise our effectiveness and skill. 
He went on to say, I've always told our forces, this war is ours. The jihadi terrorists uh, of the Islamic State came to Syria from all over the world. We are the ones who, who should fight them because they have, uh, they have occupied our lands, looted our villages, killed our children, and enslaved our women. Uh, so finally, they have made uh, this group here amid the crisis there. They're making the agreement with the Syrian government. This is something also that uh, those that have been backing this war uh, to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad had always feared, that if the uh, Kurds or the Syrian Defense Forces ever united with the Syrian military, that it would change the battlefield altogether. But also keep in mind, as we said to you already from our own intelligence source there, the, the ISIS militants are not going to be used as much in Syria as they're going over into Iraq to retake back Iraq because of the, uh, the, the, the power grip is being lost by the United States, by Israel. They're losing their grip on the Iraqi government there. And so they're now going in there to try to completely implode that, that country once again. This is, as we had reported to you, that uh, news of that coming out that the United States was trying to change uh, the status quo that was going on has led to a lot of bloodshed in that country. Well, now they're going to be a lot more bloodshed and ISIS will re, uh, reignite and then Syria will face yet again another onslaught from ISIS once it regroups inside of Iraq. Uh, because inside of Iraq, it will face very little opposition. Uh, also, uh, there is an article here, uh, The Hill, saying Turkey appears to be committing war crimes in northern Syria. Well, that is an understatement. Uh, but I can give you an example of one of those or, war crimes there. This here is the Secretary General of the future Syrian party, Hervin uh, Kahalif, and I, and I warn you, uh, in just a moment, it'll be very, very graphic what you see. This woman was drugged from her car. Uh, she was actually drugged from her car while she was trying to escape the fighting from the Turkish military there. Uh, she was brutally assaulted. She was uh, raped, according to the reports that came out about her, and then she was stoned to death. Again, the images that you're about to see are very graphic. It is her corpse. And this is the lady here laying on the ground there. She was murdered by allegedly murdered by the Turkish forces that invaded there. That's just one of many cases of these type things going on. That was put out by Boten Kurdistani uh, uh, 24, their news source there inside of uh, Syria there. Also, the U.S. Navy Vice Admiral explains goals of USS Porter approaching near Russian border. Um, U.S. warship armed with cruise missiles and interceptors marks the seventh entry of an American missile destroyer in the Black uh, Sea since the beginning of the year, as well as the second of the USS Porter. Uh, according to the statement published in the newspaper Stars and Stripes, an uh, Arleon Burke-class destroyer was deployed to an area near the Russian border in order to carry out routine operations. Well, more war games on the Russian border. Uh, and I guess we just like pushing at the Russian bear. Uh, nonetheless, so as I've stated before, it's all just a show and tell. In the end, they're working together. And guess who's going to bear the brunt of that combined force? I'm Stephen Benoom, Erev Tov. In a world of Ain Shalom, there is no peace. Good evening.